Okay, so a bottle. So a lot of you guys know that we call vases or pots with shape to them sexy pots here at the studio. It's basically because we don't know if they're called a vase or a vase. And it's just easier and definitely for marketing purposes, sexy pot is a little more fun to say. What is there between a sexy pot and a bottle is really the new skill is just learning how to really collar in and having control of your clay when you're making that narrow bottleneck. So what makes that difficult is the thickness that occurs once you collar your clay and changing the speed of your hands so that you can accommodate for the shorter distance around the wheel. So I'll explain that a little further later on. If any of you guys are working in a community studio that offers baths like ours here in New Jersey, um, you'll find that those holes will stretch a little, which will cause a little ticking in your bat. You guys have seen me do this in other videos. I take a little bit of dry clay off the floor, although it's really not good to have a lot of dry clay on the floor, and I shove it in the holes. So you don't want to use wet clay because that wet clay is malleable gives you a little leeway. The dry clay, rocks of it, will give you a little bit of time before it gets wet. And that'll keep your bat still, hopefully. So I think this is about four and a half pounds. When I open up, I wanna make sure that I accommodate for whether I'm gonna put a foot on this bottle or not. And I'm not a big fan of feet on the bottle, on a bottle, so I'm gonna Go down far enough to give me a little bit of space. I'm gonna go a little bit more down so that's not too thin, but not enough where it's gonna be bottom heavy. So the type of bottle I'm aiming to do is almost like a jug, sort of like a growler. So I'm gonna open up the cylinder straight on the bottom, do a little last minute collaring. So as I open up, I then have my hands around I'm just gonna push with the palm of my left hand in towards the middle along with, I'm sorry, palm of my left hand and my right hand, just to sort of do this little scoop in so that the clay doesn't start to come straight out. Remember, every time you put a piece of clay on the wheel, the wheel is super excited to go ahead and make a plate because of the centripetal force. So it's always you fighting against the wheel's desire to make a plate. I'm gonna start down on the bottom. Now, when I'm dealing with bigger clay, I use a lot more on my hands. As you can imagine, the two finger, four finger method is gonna be a little harder to do with that big of clay. So instead of using just these fingers here, I'm actually using all my fingers in a straight line as if it was one finger and a few extra fingers on the side. And I always use a sponge with bigger clay. It's just me, you don't have to. I just know that I have the ability to scoop a little bit more clay if I'm using a sponge and I get a little bit of a smoother line. I'll get those finger marks in later when I want them to be there. So my goal first is to get those walls to be my desired thickness. Now, I'm a person who likes to carve my pot so I am going to not make them too thin. Remember, pottery goals is not necessarily making super thin walls. It's about making consistent walls. So if you're gonna make them thick, you're gonna make them consistently thick. If you're gonna make them thin, you can make them consistently thin. Me, I'm a bull in a china shop, so I can't have things too thin. So I'm gonna do my first collar to sort of get rid of this sort of bulge that happened here, and just to tell this clay that eventually it's gonna end up really narrow. So collaring is super wet, six points, thumb tip tops of my thumbs, fingertips, and the space between my middle knuckle and my first knuckle. All of them are on the same plane and they're touching, wheels going fast and wet, and my hand's going fast. If I have my hand go too slow, I'm gonna eat away and sand the clay. When I get close to the top, I'm gonna close up a little bit and come off. Go ahead and compress that lip. Get myself another pull down here. Make 
make sure my head is not in the camera. I want to thin out my top a little bit because when I compress it and collar it to make it into a neck, it's going to get double thick. Mm -hmm. So if it's a half an inch thick now, when I collar in, it's going to be three quarters of an inch. And what that's going to do is push down the walls over here. one more sort of pull to get my walls a little thinner down on the bottom. I noticed that I left quite a bit of clay down on the bottom. Okay. So if I was just making a regular sexy pot, I could sit there and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and flatten this, give it a little bit of shoulder, finish off that lip. But what I actually want to do is I want to collar this in even more. So I'm going to start down at the bottom, six points, wheel going fast, and I'm going to ease into this neck. I want to do it in sections because, as I said, this is going to get thicker, and then this is going to weigh this down. So as I start to collar up in sections, I'm going to go up, up, oops, jumped a little there. I want to now thin this part out because now it's thicker than the bottom of my pot. Now I don't just start here. I start all the way at the bottom. Even if I'm not doing anything, even if this is just me completing the motion, I'm not doing anything, I'm just sort of straightening it out. Now I'm going to go in and make an effort. I'm going to do what I call a micro pull. Make up my own words here. Um, and what that is, is I went from doing all of this, all these fingers, to really just using my fingers. It gives me a little bit more of an, an ability to really thin out the parts, the parts that I need. I'm gonna collar again, so I'm gonna speed my wheel up, start down on the bottom. Elbows are attached to my body, as you may see. Okay, if my arms are not attached to my body, now I'm almost going for a ride like this. What I wanna do is I always just wanna use my arms, using my entire body as an anchor. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and thin this out. Now I can decide how tall I want this to be based on where I start. So if I start down here by really making it into a neck, I could have a neck this tall. Because if it's this wide, and then we make it this wide, it gives me enough clay to go taller. That's something that's sort of a little tricky, but the great part is you can always just go back and trim off your lip. I just wanna secure my walls again. Go back in here, start to really decide where my neck's gonna be with my micro pull. It's okay if your lip gets a little uneven, we can always cut that off. Now you can start to see my little fingerprint marks. Now at this point, if I wanna close this up, I want to get the water out of the inside of my pot. Use a sponge on a stick, wheel going fast. Now I'm gonna start right around the middle here wheel going a little faster and I want a super duper collar. So I want to really sort of push the clay a little. If you get the little twist, just move your hands a little faster. It means that your hand's not moving fast enough for the wheel. Now this is what we're going to talk about is when your hands were down here, it took a while for, to get a full revolution. So your hands had to go a little slower. But up here, it takes a lot less time to get around, so your hand needs to start moving faster. Start over here, I'm gonna start to collar again. Start to really kind of accentuate that neck. My fingers are touching each other. Again, don't worry about that sort of uneven lip. Now I'm gonna get in here and use my fingers to sort of thin that out a little. A little bit of a wonk here. Sometimes when I think about it too much because I'm trying to explain it, it becomes a little bit more of a mess. Looks like it's happening. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. Now you don't wanna cut this off immediately because you don't wanna cut off too much clay and if your clay is super thick, you're gonna cut off more clay than necessary. So I'm gonna go down here again. My wheel's going fast. Now the situation is the top of that got a little too thick. So down here was thin. So I'm not gonna do anything really. And then here, I'm gonna start to thicken it, thin it out a little bit more. Okay. 
Now, a lot of people, when they pull off, you might get this sort of funky um, here. Like if I go too fast, it starts to get this little twist. You wanna think about placing um, a card on the top of a house of cards. So when you do that, right, you put the card down, you put the card down, and then you wait until you know that it's completely settled, and then you gently take it off. And that'll kind of help you keep it in that sort of round shape that you're aiming for. If you notice, I'm just gonna sort of fix my shoulder. I have a little bit of a wonky thing here. I'm doing it with my hands attached. I don't just go like this. My hands are, my elbows are on my body. And I just wanna sort of, looks as though over here I screwed something up a little, so. It's all good. Okay, so. Now I wanna really start to finesse my shape a little bit. I'm gonna cut off a little bit of my lip. Flare it out a little bit. So it's okay to have a little bit of a thick sort of top part there. You never want to end it in a sharp sort of spot there because that will chip instantly. <clears throat> you may have seen a little glitch in the video. It's because I was missing my favorite tool. This is just a plain steel rib. It comes with every cheap set of pottery tools and I hated it for years, but I love it now for doing all sorts of things. I'm gonna try and clean up the sides of this, make it a little straighter, fix that shoulder, smooth it out. This will take just a little bit of clay off and you can use a small part of it by curling it or you can use the whole thing. <coughs> I'm gonna have my hands on my body curl it a little, wheel moving relatively um, uh, about 50 miles an hour. We're gonna, you can see I'm just sort of cleaning off the edge here. Now I'm gonna take the gook off of here, but I wanna wa want you to see what I do after. I'm gonna scrape that off. I'm gonna wet it. I'm gonna go a little bit under from where I started. I try and start to go exactly where I left off. Um, it's just not gonna be successful. So now I'm sort of pushing down on the shoulder, um, trying to fix this little uneven pull that I did right there. Again, you've heard me say it, if you mess up once, there's very, very little you can do about it. <laughs> Not many how do I fix this things. You just gotta say it is what it is. Go in here. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and use my wood tool to sort of clean up that bottom part. Straight down, because I'm aiming for sort of that jug look. And the tool underneath. Pull that away. And call it a pot. <laughs> 